Hello, I'm Chris from TechSpurt and today we're going to be checking out the fresh new Nokia G60 5G. Oh, b oh, I just wanted to be like the other YouTubers. The Nokia G60 5G is a mid-range mobile costing €319, Euros, so around 300 ish quid here in Blighty, a similar asking price to the OnePlus Nord CE2 and Motorola's Moto G82. But is it actually worth it? Well, let's whip the Nokia G65 Dion out of the box, check out that camera tech, the gaming chops, all the good stuff. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what's in the box? Well, you've got yourself one Nokia G65 G smartphone, a Type-C USB cable, and that is it, no power adapter bundled in that box with the Nokia G60 because manufacturer HMD Global is trying to cut down on the number of plastics and everything to save the planet. Although somewhat ironically, you do still get an entire tree's worth of random pamphlets and stuff bundled in there. So there you go, that was nice and easy. Now let's crack on with the phone. So here in all of its splendor is the latest mid-range Nokia blower. It's a 6.58 inch smartphone, although it feels even bigger than that because you do have some fairly chunky bezels surrounding that display, especially down below where you've got a bit of fat lip action and some fairly flat edges on the Nokia G60 as well. So not the most comfortable hand feel in the world. I would have preferred a bit more curvature. And that frame is actually constructed from 60% recycled plastics and the placky back, meanwhile, is 100% recycled. So that's where a lot of the G65 G eco-friendly creds come into play. You've got a matte finish to that back so it doesn't pick up scuffs and greasy prints too easily and it does have this speckled finish to it as well which I guess is a result of it being produced from recycled materials. It is quite unusual. I've got to admit the first time I pulled the G60 out of the box and flipped it over I thought that somehow it had just become coated in shit already. You yeah, know, it's definitely a bit different. And the Nokia G60 comes in a trouser dangerously thrilling selection of colours including this here pure black version and also ice grey. Black and grey, that's undoubtedly the most British selection of colours I've ever heard. And with any luck, the Nokia G65 G will prove pretty hardy because you've got a Gorilla Glass 5 display. It's also IP52 splash resistant. So don't worry if you spill your pint on it, just give it a good rubbing off, job done. And one of the very best things about Nokia smartphones, depending on your point of view, of course, is the fact you've got a lovely stock version of Android running on there. And not only that, but you've also got three guaranteed years of OS updates with the Nokia G65 G. So that means it's on Android 12 right now. It'll get Android 13, 14 and 15 beyond that. You've also got three guaranteed years of monthly security updates. And as if that wasn't all enough, HMD Global is also chucking in a three year warranty. So basically, no worries if it all goes tits up. And that's the kind of support you really struggle to find at this sort of price point. So because it's a stock version of Android, you've got all the usual stuff on here, the Google Discover feed, you've got your apps tray to squirrel away all of your bits. You can drag down that notifications bar from anywhere on screen. You've got your control center there, fully customizable. Unfortunately, you do have a bit of crapware packed on here though, including the likes of Amazon Music, ExpressVPN, GoPro Quick, bloody LinkedIn, but it's nowhere near as bad a situation as with many rivals and you can just quickly and easily delete any crap you don't want. To actually unlock the Nokia G65 G, you have an edge mounted fingerprint sensor, slightly indented beneath the surface there. Mostly works first time, occasionally I'll have to tap twice to get it to recognize me, but all good, you've got a good bit of haptic feedback with it as well. And unlike those Pixel phones, HMD has actually added in a bit of face unlock as well, which again, seems to work an absolute charm. If we get our handy Pokey pin device, we can pop open that SIM tray. And in here, you'll see the space for two SIM cards. Otherwise, alternatively, that second SIM tray can be used to house a micro SD memory card up to one terabyte in size. That's just as well because the base model of the Nokia G65 G comes with just 64 gigs of storage, which as you can see there, I've mostly filled, courtesy of good old Genshin bloody impact. It's the size of a freaking PC game, seriously. Now, for you media fans out there, what you have here is a 6.58 inch IPS panel, so not full OLED, unfortunately, which you can find at this price point from the likes of that OnePlus Nord CE2. This does suffer from some weaknesses such as the poor viewing angles. Once you tilt it away from your face a bit, the images do darken quite considerably. Of course, that's only really a problem if you're trying to watch a video with someone else, otherwise it's absolutely fine. It's a full HD plus resolution panel, so reasonably crisp visuals spaffed out by this thing as well. Colors aren't particularly dull or lifeless. They've got a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of pop. But certainly at this price point, you can do better. And yes, there is actually an old school nipple notch poking its way into proceedings when you go full screen. 
But on the plus side, if you enter the display settings, scroll to the bottom, you'll see you've got an adaptive screen refresh rate option. It can actually go all the way up to 120 hertz. Of course, only when you've got a bit of supported content on the go. Otherwise, you can drop it to 60 hertz full time if you want to preserve battery life. That's the visuals, but what about the audio? Well, unfortunately, you don't get a stereo speaker set up here on the Nokia G60 5G. It is a mono speaker all the way. But is this actually usable? There's no sensor built into the Credit Zen hybrids that detects when you remove the headphones from your bonds and then automatically pauses whatever audio you're listening to. And perhaps unsurprisingly, because it is a mono speaker setup, not the most powerful output in the world. Certainly, if you're in a noisy environment, even if you jack that volume all the way up to the maximum levels, you'll probably still have the, the phone up to your ear like this, trying to work out what is going on. And though at least to be fair to the Nokia G60, it's not particularly tinny audio at least. And screw it anyway, because you actually get a headphone jack down on that bottom edge as well, as so you can plug in if you want to. Otherwise, you do have full Bluetooth 5.1 support. And this does a bang up job of streaming to your headphones, your speakers, whatever you fancy. Now, the Nokia G60 5G is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 chipset. It's the same platform that was bunged inside a mod roll as Moto G82 and the considerably more expensive Nokia X30, which was also just launched. And that's backed here on the G60 by either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM. I've got the 4 gig model. Here's the Geekbench scores if you actually care about any of that. I'm a lot more bothered about the everyday performance and thankfully the Nokia G60 seems fine in this regard. Apps load up pretty quickly and generally linger in the background for a while. They're not immediately shut down in order to free up more memory. And after a day or so of play, I haven't really noticed much in the way of sort of stumbles, pauses, anything like that. And gamers will have a reasonably decent time with the Nokia G60 5G as well. I found even more demanding fare like Genshin Impact played all right on the sort of low to medium detail settings, even on this 4 gig model. The frame rate did unfortunately get a bit choppy when the action got a little bit frantic. So not exactly the most fluid experience in the world ever. You're better off with light affairs such as Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, which do tend to play a bit more nicely on the Snapdragon 695. It's that perfectly flat touch screen is reasonably responsive, so quite good for your action. Packed fair stuff where fast reflexes are definitely required. And as you may have gathered by the name of this device, the Nokia G60 5G, you don't have full 5G support, hip hip huzzah. Now, no worries on the battery front. Stuffed inside of the Nokia G60, you've got a 4,500 milliamp hour capacity cell. Not the biggest at this sort of price point by any means, but then combine that with the energy efficient Snapdragon 695 chipset and also the fact you've got that lovely stock Android vibe and you'll get all day play out of this thing, no worries. We're talking easily six or seven hours of screen on time with mixed use, lots of media streaming, bit of camera play, web browsing, all of that good stuff. And when it does finally conk out, well, you've got 20 watt wired charger, not exactly the nippiest around. Of course, you'll have to provide your own power adapter as well, don't forget. And no wireless charging support, but that's standard at this sort of price. Now let's have a squint at that camera tech, which is spearheaded by a 50 megapixel primary camera sensor. Nokia was unfortunately a little bit vague when it comes to exactly which camera sensor has been used in the Nokia G60, but I do know there's no optical image stabilization packed in there. But you know what? I got some really good looking photos out of this thing, packed with enough sharp details so they looked good even on a proper big screen, particularly these portrait shots. Colors come out close to natural, even when you're snapping quite vibrant subjects. And while strong contrast usually results in oversaturation, the Nokia G60 does hold up well compared with some of its rivals. Indoor snaps are often a bit grainy, but again, nothing too horrific. Although at night, the Nokia G60 does struggle quite a bit. And while the night mode brightens things up considerably, it often can't help with the soft focus and noise. For a different kind of view, you can always swap to the basic five megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. And this is pretty basic stuff. It struggles in more testing conditions, but it's there if you need it. And that final lens slapped on the back of the Nokia G60 is just a depth sensor for those portrait shots. Now, if you swap on over to the video mode, you will quickly discover that there's no way of shooting 4K resolution footage here. It does max out at 1080p full HD at either 30 or 60 FPS. And strong light will definitely need to be avoided at all times. Otherwise, the resulting footage will look, well, just like this right here, really. Same goes for night video as well. Like most of the competition, this phone just kind of falls on its arse a bit. But in good lighting, you will get respectable looking video clips with decent audio pickup and the stabilization ain't too bad either.
And in addition to the portrait mode and the night mode, you've got a small selection of other stuff, including dual sight for shooting with the front and rear cameras at once. You've also got a dedicated pro mode, a good bit of raw support on there, if I can just actually tap the thing. And then last up is the 8 megapixel, I believe it is, selfie camera. This does a pretty good job in stronger light, making sure that your face is fully in focus with attractive portrait results if you want. But again, indoor shots will look rather soft and at night everything gets a bit grainy. And there you have it, you gorgeous buggers you. That in a nutshell is the Nokia G60 5G. So what do you guys reckon? Are you tempted by this smartphone? It's uh, up against some pretty stiff competition, the likes of the OnePlus Nord CE2, which I do very much like. Maybe you're more swayed by the stock Android vibe here on the Nokia G60 though. Anyway, it'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love ya. <laughs> Completely missed. Oh fucking hell. Oh bollocks. The things I do for this stupid bloody channel. <laughs>